Greetings everyone, this is Rob Sanders and today we're going to talk about what is digital marketing. So thanks for joining us here at Simply Learn and let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk about why digital marketing is important in today's world. Uh, we're also gonna talk about what is digital marketing and the types of digital marketing channels that are out there. Then we're going to talk about the customer life cycle in digital marketing. So what does it take to get somebody from point A to point Z through digital marketing? And so those are the topics we're going to cover. So hope you enjoy yourself while you're learning and let's get right to it. So let's start talking about why digital marketing is important. So let's start there on the why. So we're just a fly on the wall and we're in an office environment we're looking at two friends having a conversation about digital marketing. So really, if we're listening in, everybody, every marketer is using digital marketing for his or her business. Now, digital marketing has become more popular than traditional marketing. That's not a surprise. So in response, hey, over the past few decades, digital marketing has evolved at a rapid pace. These days, a lot of people spend most of their time on the internet. So what happens in the internet every 60 seconds? Well, a lot happens every 60 seconds. So according to social media today, I mean, there's a lot of snaps, there's a lot of clicks, there's a lot of text, there's a lot of videos watched, there's a lot of pictures being taken, there's a lot of voice activated activity going on, a lot of tweets, emails, swipes. There's a lot going on here in 60 seconds. So there's a lot of activity on the internet, a lot. And so the one gentleman says, hey, can you also mention a few differences between digital and traditional marketing systems? And then the expert responds, of course, I can certainly clarify a few differences between digital and traditional. And so he goes on to say what the differences are between traditional and digital. And let's look at that. Okay. So on traditional marketing, we're talking about print, radio, billboard, newspaper, TV, anything that's not on your mobile or laptop. So we know with traditional marketing reach is limited with digital marketing reach is maximum. And what we mean by that is, Hey, when you print something, you're printing it for X amount of people. If you're trying to promote an event and you basically create a thousand flyers, okay, you figure it's going to a thousand people, maybe they'll share it. So you're looking at about 2000 people maybe just to be generous. Well, digital marketing, we're promoting an event. We can promote it to a whole lot of people depending on the platform. So 2000 is nothing when you're targeting an audience on Facebook or Google search. Traditional marketing, non-versatile. And with digital marketing, very versatile. So again, going back to our flyer, print an eight and a half by 11. Okay, that's it. You know, with, with digital marketing, you're running display banners, you get 468 by 60, 200 by 200, 250 by 250, 300 by 300. I mean, the list goes on on the types of different display sizes, not to mention text ads, not to mention video or multimedia. Uh, so there's a lot you can do to get your message out there. Okay. With traditional, it's always delayed communication. Okay. So meaning if you're trying to get that TV spot, there might not be a spot open until one in the morning. Okay. Well, with digital marketing, there is no hours. Okay. You can certainly get your point out there and have people see it instantaneously. So with traditional marketing, there's a lack of real time results. I mean, this seems like uh, it's obvious, but you know, digital marketing, that's one of the biggest benefits, instant real time results, instant. Okay. Nowadays going to analytics, you can look at real time reporting. Okay. So we could see real time results. Okay, traditional marketing can be very costly. I mean, if you're not only doing postcards and printing postcards, but you have to mail those postcards. So there's postage fees. Where with digital marketing, it's very, very, very cost efficient. I mean, meaning you could pick and choose who you want to target, when you want to target, where you want to target, what you want to target. And if you're doing search, you can put your bidding in place. You can put your hours in place. You can really control how much you actually spend. That to me is one of the biggest advantages to digital marketing. Not only do you get real time results, but 
you can control costs and then obviously optimize based on the amount of cost you're spending based on those real-time results. And with traditional marketing, it's difficult to reach a target audience. You know, with digital marketing, it's easy to reach a target audience. I mean, you know, I don't want to bash traditional marketing too much. I mean, if you're going to put a TV ad in place, you know, you're going to do it on a TV show that tends to gear more towards your target audience, but that doesn't guarantee anything. Here we can simply go to Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn and just pick and choose specifically who we want to target when we want to target them. So it just becomes a lot easier to reach a targeted audience on a digital marketing platform. And then with traditional marketing, poor campaign measurement, with digital, you have easy to measure and optimize campaigns. And what we really mean by that is because you get instant time results, because you can control costs, because you can reach your target audience more easily, all those are a result of, okay, you can measure and optimize. Based on what our audience is seeing and how much they're spending to see it, we can quickly make adjustments in order to optimize the campaign for better performance. So that's generally what that means. That's a culmination of pretty much everything that we've listed as a benefit for digital marketing. Okay, so now why digital marketing has been answered with all the benefits that it carries. Let's talk about the what is digital marketing. So you know that you know you want to do digital marketing. So how do we go about that? What what is it exactly? Well, let's just define it. Digital marketing is just the act of promoting a company's product or an individual's product or service with the help of a device or technology. And so obviously when we talk about device, we're talking about maybe a laptop, we're talking about a mobile device, and when we talk about technology, it could be an app, it could be you know a cloud-based platform, okay? It could be a piece of software, okay? So a lot going on on the digital side in terms of variations and what you can do. But that's in a nutshell what digital marketing is. You're really just using technology to promote your product or service. So we know because of the benefits in digital marketing, you can promote your campaign on different platforms. Okay, so all those benefits we mentioned about instant real-time results, cost efficiency, optimizing campaigns, you could do that on search, you could do it on social, via email, on mobile apps, etc. So that's what we mean by with the help of digital devices and technology. Well, these digital devices and technology come in the form of search engines and emails and mobile apps, etc. So when we want to go and promote our product or service using a campaign, we have different options. So there are different types of digital marketing channels that we could choose from. And let's just go through that list of digital marketing channels. And the first one is what I consider the king of them all, and that's SEO. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. There's search engine marketing, there's email marketing, affiliate marketing, social, content, mobile, and then we can get into subsets of each of these digital marketing channels. But really, we'll start with SEO because that's the king. And to me, that's basically increasing the quality and quantity of relevant organic traffic on the search engines, including Google. So depending on where you're located in the US market, Google tends or has a large market share. So you want your pages on your website to be found and clicked on organically. And so that means if somebody types in a keyword, you want that relevant page to show up first on Google so somebody can click on that link, okay? And we know that millions of people, specifically in the US, but worldwide, use search on a daily basis. So if you're ranking for those relevant keywords, you can imagine how much traffic you can get. Okay, so that's SEO, okay? And here's an example. So you type in online shopping. Well, you can see the first listing here is a paid search ad. And we're gonna get to that in a minute. The second, organically, is Amazon, okay? So online shopping, you think maybe Walmart, you think maybe Alibaba, or you're thinking probably Amazon, okay? So no surprise, Amazon's ranking for the keyword online shopping. And so if somebody clicked on their listing, that's traffic for Amazon. Let's move on to search engine marketing. 
you know, known as SEM or pay per click or cost per click or PPC or CPC or sponsored search or Google ads. I mean, there's a lot of different names synonymous with SEM. So search engine marketing is really just using paid ads on search engines. Just as we saw the previous example, if you want to be found for a keyword, you don't have to worry about organic if you're willing to pay for it. You just bid on that keyword and voila, you have the opportunity to appear number one in the search results at the top of the page for that keyword. Now, when somebody clicks on it, you have to pay Google if it's Google you're advertising on, but that's the beauty of search engine marketing. You can bid on keywords and appear at the top of the search results for that keyword. Example here, if we go back to online shopping, well, myus.com is bidding on that keyword online shopping. So they're actually appearing above Amazon's organic listing, but that's what they wanna do. They wanna be found for that keyword. So if they're not ranking for it organically, well, they're bidding on it. And if somebody happened to click on that listing, then myus.com is gonna pay Google something depending on what the cost per click is. And so that could be anywhere from one penny to a hundred dollars. It depends, depends on the keyword, depends on who else is bidding on the keyword, depends on the location, depends on the time of day, depends on quality score. There's a lot of factors involved and regarding what you pay. However, the benefit of SEM is visibility and getting traffic to your website for keywords you're not found for. So that's why SEM is such a popular choice for a lot of companies. Okay, let's talk about digital marketing. That's a traditional type of digital marketing channel. It's been around a long time. You know, we all send emails on a daily basis and we probably all receive emails on a daily basis. This is an effective way to capture leads and convert them to customers because with email, you can personalize your emails and you can send your emails to a segmented audience. Okay, so if you have emails from females who are 35 years of age to 44 that live in, say, the southern part of the United States, you can segment that send them an email and cater that email directly to that audience. And of course, you can put some nice call to action in there. You can design it really snazzy and you can track it just like you can any other digital marketing channel. So email is a very effective way to really reach a target audience because everybody, for the most part, has a functioning email account. So Basically, here's an example of an email that could go out. You're selling a product and the product's promotion is about to end. Well, you know, get that email out to your target audience. Let them know, hey, you have until tonight to purchase the product. And if you purchase it, you're going to get 30% off. And you can put the coupon code right in there with a nice call to action. And you can measure how many people click on that email, go to that web page, and purchase the product using that coupon code. So that's an example of email marketing. Okay, we have affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing is an effective way for digital marketers to basically create a sales force of people. So basically what you're doing is you're getting merchants to promote your products and services. And you're using usually a third party broker like Commission Junction or CJ.com as an example to introduce you the, the person selling the product, the merchant, with the affiliate. So that affiliate could likely be a merchant, him or himself. And they can basically be a good partner of yours by publishing your product or service on their website so that they can sell in order to get commissions. So it's all based on a commission. So you basically are gonna use a third party affiliate like CJ Get all these affiliates to work for you. They're gonna promote your product or service. If they do sell your product or service, you're gonna pay them a commission. That's more or less how it works with affiliate marketing. And you know, with affiliate marketing, to me, it's a good way to you know really promote your product or service. And you can pick and choose the affiliates or the publishers of whom you want to work with. So here's an example of affiliate marketing at work. Okay, you basically see a banner. Basically, you could see earn up to 12% advertising fees with a trusted e-commerce leader. 
Okay, so if somebody clicked on that, purchased, for example, or joined, you could pay off that commission. Okay, let's turn our attention to social media marketing. So social media marketing, you know, I would say it's fairly new. I mean, if I think about it, we're in 2019, and I remember talking about Facebook back in 2006. So you're talking about 13, 14, 15 years of social media. It's definitely evolved over the years. And, but the concept remains the same. It involves creating different types of content depending on the platform. Okay, so you could be on Pinterest or Instagram and be dealing with photos. Or you could be on Twitter tweeting out certain characters up to a limit. Okay, so it really depends on the social media platform uh, that really drives the type of content you're going to promote. But we know social media can be effective because people use social media. I mean, Facebook is one of the more popular platforms. And if you want to get your product or service out there, you could certainly pay to have an ad on Facebook or you could just post your content organically. Okay, that's the beauty of social. Most of your social platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram, they all have a paid form of advertising that you can use to promote your product or service. Or you can go the organic route and you know post content organically in hopes of driving traffic back to your website. So with social, you do have two options here, but social is interesting because there are a lot of different social media platforms out there. It really depends on your product or service. Okay, so an example of social media marketing, especially on Facebook. With Facebook, you got mobile and desktop, and you obviously have the opportunity to post something organically and have that liked or commented on or shared, or you could post an ad and get that liked, commented or shared or clicked and have people go back to your website and fulfill the goal of what you want them to do. So moving on to content marketing. So content marketing is really an effective way of really distributing valuable content online and when we talk about content marketing you know we're talking about different types of assets so it could be simply text in the form of a blog post or it could be a video or it could be an, an infographic or it could be an image okay there are lots of ways to create content these days especially in digital marketing and the great thing about content marketing is you're writing content for a targeted audience so if you're trying to target an audience on say instagram then you know who your audience is and you know what the type of content you're going to post on there so it could be in the form of a video or infographic or just a graphic and so that's the beauty of content marketing really putting yourself out there um, and depending on the platform putting yourself out there with various types of content so for example if we look at youtube you can see this video here about digital marketing certified associate. Well, hey, you don't need to always write the content. You can produce the content in the form of a video and post it on YouTube. This is a form of content marketing. So that's content marketing. And then let's talk about mobile marketing. So content marketing, again, different types. But if we go now to mobile marketing, you can kind of segue from content to mobile because the only difference here is with mobile, it's strictly on mobile phone. It's not desktop. So mobile marketing is really a strategy on its own that helps you, the company, promoting your product or service to reach your target audience through a mobile device, and that includes tablets. And how you could do that is via messaging. You could do it via email, or you could be do it via an app. Okay, so you have different ways of getting your content out there to people. Okay, so as an example, you can use basically SMS or instant messaging via mobile devices to promote your product or service. Here's another example of a mobile marketing via app install. And so you can even compound that by running a, say, Google ad as an example, and running your Google ad on, say, just mobile. You could do a bit adjustment just for mobile, and the goal could be app installs. Okay, so, and you can even do a mobile or app extension. So there's lots of ways to really promote your app or your product or your service via mobile marketing.
Okay, let's talk about the customer life cycle. So we know why we want to do digital marketing. We want to know, we want, we know what the digital marketing channels are because we just talked about them from SEO to social to affiliate to mobile to content to SEM. Okay, you have a lot of different digital marketing channels at your disposal. So now how do we go ahead and approach our customers? So that's what we're going to talk about first. So we're going to talk about different stages of the customer life cycle. Okay, and the first one is the awareness stage. So we need to get our customers aware of what we're selling or what we're promoting. Okay, so the awareness stage is really what product does your brand offer? That's a question we want to get out there and we want to answer. Okay, what does a customer need your product? Or excuse me, why does a customer need your product? That's a question we want to answer with digital marketing. Okay, what solution does your product provide? Okay, that's an answer to a question we want to make sure people understand. So these are questions that we want to be able to answer in the form of digital marketing, whether that be mobile or content. Okay, so getting our information out there that answers these essential questions. And if we could do that, then somebody's going to become aware of our product or service. Okay, so what product does our brand offer? Why does a customer need it? And what solution does it provide? Okay, those are some key questions that people tend to ask themselves when they look at a brand. Okay, and when they look at a product, hey, do I really need this? Is it going to help me in my life? Okay, and who, who is selling this? I mean, who is this brand? I mean, that's those are just things that run through people's mind intuitively that with the right messaging, the right channel, the right type of asset, the right targeted audience, you can quickly make somebody aware of your brand's product or service. In this stage, it's help potential customers discover your brand with the help of these different marketing channels. So in the awareness stage, you know, content is key. So it's to me, if we have a website, we need a blog because if somebody does come to our blog from say organic search, SEO, then we can write about that product or service via blog and, and talk to our customer, talk directly to our targeted audience through that blog. And if we're not ranking organically, we can use paid search to promote it because paid search on Google, for example, Basically, we can be right at the top of the search results. And so somebody can actually see it when they do a search because we know millions of people use search on a daily basis. You could do social media marketing. Okay, so you can publish that product or service on Facebook while you're building your community. And you can use affiliate marketing to help get the word out by using CG.com as an example. Build up a sales force of people these publishers that are going to put your product or service out there. So to me, in the awareness stage, these are the, the digital marketing channels you could focus on. Now, I will say one thing about display ads. Display is part of search engine marketing. You could use display because you can reach a large number of people. So even though it's listed here low priority, in the awareness stage, display ads mean that if you're on Google's display number, you could pick and choose your sites, your demographics, keywords, topics, and audience. You could focus on all those different demographics to really attract a large number of people. So low priority, but it's probably also good to focus on in the awareness stage. Okay, so content marketing, you must create a high quality content that people are searching for. Without content, it's hard to get found. And so to me, this is you know where the blog comes in, SEO, Take that content, get it optimized. Okay, SEM, if we're not ranking organically, we can make sure we're at the top of the paid search results or the, the, the search results for a particular keyword we want to be found for. And then social media marketing, using different channels depending on the channel. If we're selling, you know, training like Simply Learn does, you know, LinkedIn is a good platform for us. Okay, and then affiliate you know, basically building up a nice network of publishers to get the word out. So these are all good channels that we can focus in on. So traffic sources may include paid, unpaid, social, referral, display, email, or direct. So they, they, they could come in the awareness stage from all different types of channels. Even though you're focused on content, I mean, you could still get traffic from mobile or email. So now that we got the word out via 
all these different marketing channels, there's that consideration stage. So, you know, people are aware of us, now they're considering us. And that's kind of the next stage in the process. Okay, so a few essential questions to address on the consideration stage. Hey, what features make your product valuable to others? And how will I increase customer engagement towards my product? So those are answers to questions you wanna ask, okay? What features make your product valuable? You wanna basically separate yourself from the competition. Basically, that's what you're trying to answer, okay? So if you're promoting your product or service on paid search and other people are bidding on the same keyword, how are you gonna stand out? And then how will I increase customer engagement towards my product? So in, for example, if you're on Facebook, okay, and you're trying to get people over to your site to purchase your product, then how are you going to improve that engagement? You gotta create something really snazzy or really it's gonna be attention grabbing or something that's gonna get them to become aware of it, that's gonna separate your post from all the other posts that are in somebody's Facebook newsfeed. Okay, so you really have to work hard to really convince somebody to get their consideration towards your product or service. So in this stage, your customer considers your product, so help them understand how your product is valuable. Okay, to me, email works really good here because if you have a targeted audience, this gives you the opportunity to really answer these questions in that particular channel. Email, you could support that with a promotion. And display, I think display is a good option here too because even though you know people are trying to become aware, you know, you can really hone in and really get them to take that next step. Okay, with display, you can even do remarketing. So if somebody's been to your site because they're aware of your product, they're curious, you can cookie them and remarket to them via display. So display to me is a good, a good channel to use here. Okay, so you have email, mobile display, you know, SEM, these are all you know, good channels to use on the consideration stage, especially on search, because if somebody's looking for something and they're aware of your brand, then you have the good opportunity to get them to click on your ad, especially if you're offering a promotion and get them to convert. The goal here is to increase our engagement. So people are aware we're moving them further along the funnel. With email marketing, we have the opportunity to promote the product by sending an email directly to our audience. So with this stage, plan your campaigns around welcoming emails, newsletters. We can talk about product descriptions, add ratings and reviews in the email. You know, we really just wanna encourage people to purchase the product. That's, we're trying to sway them over. So email is a good source to allow us to do that. So with mobile marketing, we can promote the products by sending relevant messages to our target audience. Display, again, retargeting, because we can retarget an audience that has been to our website, already did some research about our brand, our product or service, and now we're going to reach back out to them to sway them. So remember, we wanna encourage customers to buy a product by creating detailed articles about the product. That always helps, and that's content, okay? We wanna opt for a customer testimonial, okay? That helps sway people, and add some guest blogging. Okay, we can have ambassadors blog on our behalf or we can go out and blog on somebody else's site. Okay, so blogging works both ways. It's ways of, of showing yourself and telling people, hey, we know you're looking for this product. Here's why you wanna choose us. Okay, moving on from the consideration to the purchase stage. So they're aware of you, they're considering you, and now we're on to the purchase stage. So the questions we wanna really make sure we address here are, how are my prices compared to my competitors? And is my brand more credible than others? Okay, so they're considering you, but that price point, and it may not even be the price, it could be the shipping, for example. The price could be good, but the shipping cost could be high. So you really wanna do some due diligence and research on what your competitors are doing. Credibility, that goes back to the consideration stage and testimonials. You want to make sure you have reviews and testimonials to really elevate what you're trying to tell customers and that that is, hey, I have a good brand, I have a good product, I have a good service. Come buy my stuff, come buy my product and service. But you really need to support that claim. You just can't go out and say it. And so supporting that comes in the form of what other people say. 
And that could be reviews. That could be comments on a social media platform. It could be, you know, stars on say Yelp or Google My Business. You know, make sure you do your due diligence and make sure you get people to, you know, review you or provide testimonials because people are going to do their due diligence before they purchase, especially if it's on Google My Business or Yelp or TripAdvisor or whatever it is you're trying to sell, they're going to be able to see those reviews. And so do your due diligence to get the reviews. And if it is a negative review, hey, that's okay. You can't please everyone. You're going to get them. That's the world we live in. Just make sure you show your upper hand and respond even to the negative as well as the positive reviews that you get. That actually bodes well to some people because, hey, it shows that I made a mistake and you're willing to correct it. And so people actually see that, that could be the tipping point to getting them to purchase. Say, look, hey, this brand really cares because they're really responding to people. They're not ignoring negativity. Okay, just the small things that can get people to change their mind. Now with the purchase stage, according to eConsultancy, 83% of the online audience require encouragement to complete a purchase. Encouragement, what does that mean? Well, it could mean providing a promo, giving them that extra incentive. You know, if you don't offer promo, consider it, especially on the email. In the example we looked at earlier, sending out an email means that if the promo is going to end at midnight, send that email out and tell people they have until midnight. And if they purchase today, you'll leave it, increase it to 20%. And email is a good channel for that. Mobile can reach a lot of people through SMS. Okay, social media, reaching people instantaneously. And then, you know, really with the purchase stage, it gives pro prospects an offer to help them make that purchase. So you have plenty of channels to choose from. In fact, most of these channels, the only one really that doesn't fit the instantaneous mode is SEO. But you can really focus on affiliate, even though that's a low priority here. You can really you know, coordinate with your publishers, who especially those publishers that have proven their worth and have sold your products in the past, you know, get them to help promote it and incentivize their audience. So let's move on from the purchase to the post purchase stage. So this is after somebody purchases. Okay, so some essential questions we wanna be able to address here. So what additional product could my customer buy? Now that they're my customer, what else could I sell them? What, you know, without being too pushy, could if they buy a coat, will a hat work or a pair of gloves or, you know, a blouse? You know, you wanna be able to, you know, push a product on your customer, but think about how you can complement that purchases that purchasers or customers product and then how to improve the customer buying experience so again this goes back to you know what we just said about reviews get somebody to offer a review and if they don't give you a full complement of five stars they only give you three and a half stars then you know what that's great feedback because then you can learn from that and then the other question is, will the customer refer us to others? And if so, why? So that's definitely something you want to be able to address in the post-purchase stage. So let's take a look here. So with post-purchasing stage, you know, to me, email's at the top of this list because if somebody purchases something, you could send a nice thank you email because if they purchase, they're giving you their email in return because you're likely going to be sending them the receipt via email. So email to me is a nice channel and send in a nice message even you know social media you know you can thank your community for supporting you on this recent campaign that you ran you know even throw in an extra five or ten percent on a future purchase as a thank you and that's easily done on social media you know you could even post a blog you know promoting you know the success of a product and then offering a promotion okay so there's a lot of things you could be doing here on the post purchasing stage so to me even looking at content again you could even you know put a survey together you could even put a survey together for your affiliates okay you could even post a poll on facebook so it's just working in with these different channels to get some feedback about your product and service so with email, mobile, you can engage customers with follow-up emails or customer care content. 
you know, with mobile, if you have somebody's mobile number, hey, text them. A simple thank you goes a long way. You know, you could say, hey, look, if you're satisfied, let us know, give us a call. You can even, in the EE mobile text message, you can put a link to a survey. Send emails to active subscribers, give rewards for customer feedback. So if somebody does provide feedback, give them an extra 10% off. You know, you wanna be able to reward loyalty. Loyalty comes in the form of a partnership. If you're giving somebody discounts and you have a good product or service, then they're gonna recognize that. They're gonna say, hey, look, I really like this product. And they're giving me 10%, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase from these guys again. So give those discounts to those active customers. Or on the affiliate network, give referral opportunities to your customers. So if it's an affiliate publisher, hey, if they're getting people to your site, you know, reward them. Or if it's an email and you put a four to a friend, get an extra 10% off, it doesn't hurt because you're incentivizing people to help you sell your product. So with social display and content, use those banner ads or use that content that you display on social or the blog you're gonna write to give customers advice in order to maximize the value of the purchase. So again, you can use these platforms to also enhance uh, what they purchased. So, hey, you just purchased this product. Thank you very much. Did you know you could do this, this, and this with it? And so that's the idea of a post-purchase stage, is to maximize these channels to be able to answer those essential questions about what else could they purchase? You know, do they like, how do I be get these people to become loyal customers? Okay, so with the first purchase stage, if a customer has bought a pair of sports shoes, for example, running shoes, you can recommend cross product sale, a cross sale. It could be a pair of shorts or a water bottle or an accessory with an exclusive discount. So that's another example of what you can do on the post-purchase stage. Hope you enjoyed our video today. I want to thank you for paying attention. If you have any questions, please visit us at simplylearn.com or visit us on our YouTube channel. There's plenty of videos about some of these digital marketing channels we discussed today, including affiliate, SEO, email marketing, social media, search engine marketing. They're all there on our YouTube channel. So thank you again and look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.